Welcome to our lesson on simplifying fractions. In this lesson, we'll be looking at simplifying regular fractions as well as simplifying mixed numbers and improper fractions. When simplifying a regular fraction, there are two methods to it. The first method is what I call the not-so-fast method. You use repeated division until you cannot divide anymore. What you want to do is you want to look at the numerator, or the top of your fraction, and the denominator, or the bottom of your fraction, and think, what can I divide both of those numbers by? And reasoning, I'd say, well, they're both even, so that I can divide both of those by 2. So then 6 divided by 2 is 3, and 18 divided by 2 is 9. Well, then again, I have to reason, because I look at it and I'd say, well, you can divide 3 by 3 and 9 by 3. So let me use a different color to show a second step. I divide by 3 this time, and 3 divided by 3 is 1. 9 divided by 3 is 3. And I'd look, can I divide 1 and 3 both by a number? Well, we know that 1 is as simplified as it can be, so that would be my final simplified fraction. All right, the fast method for simplifying a regular fraction would be to divide the numerator and the denominator by the GCF of one another. So our numbers here are 6 and 18, and if we wanted to find the GCF, we could do a little list. I know that 6 is 1, 2, 3, and 6, and 18 would be 1, 2, 3, 6, 9, and 18. And I got these numbers because I know 1 times 6 is 6, 2 times 3 is 6. 1 times 18 is 18, 2 times 9 is 18, 3 times 6 is 18. So now, in order to identify our GCF, we have 1 is a common uh, factor, 2 is a common factor, 3 is a common factor, 6 is a common factor. So in the end, 6 is the greatest common factor. So if we do 6 divided by 6 and 18 divided by 6, 6 divided by 6 is 1. 18 divided by 6 is 3, and that is our most simplified. <clears throat> we have 1 up at the top, as well as they cannot be divided any further. We're able to do in one step, and that's why we call it the fast method. The next item we're going to look at is simplifying an improper fraction. We know that 29 eighths is an improper fraction because the numerator is greater or bigger than the denominator, which makes it improper. So what we want to do is we want to make this into a mixed number. I'm going to show you two strategies for this, and then you can choose which way you like. The first one I'm going to look at is uh, a strategy that we use some long division because we often, if you're one of my students, we talk about what does this line mean, or what's another way to say it, and it means division. So what we actually can do is we can take this fraction, or division problem, depending on how you want to look at it, and we're going to actually divide it out. So we're going to have 29 divided by 8. And we know 8 cannot go into 2. 8 can go into 29 three times, because I know 8 times tw 3 is 24, so we subtract it off and we have 5. So now we've divided using all of our digits up above, but we still have a remainder. So what you're going to do is you're going to take the number up at the top. We're going to bring it down. That's going to be our big number, 3. Our remainder is going to go to the top of this fraction, so that's going to be 5. And then our divisor is actually going to go down here to the bottom. So we have 3 and 5 eighths. 8 goes into 29 3 whole times, and then there will be 5 left over to our up top, but then we're still dividing by 8. So our final answer, I'll write it a little nicer, is 3 and 5 eighths. For the second method to simplify an improper fraction, uh, it is essentially done a little more mental math. It's using our math facts and then kind of streamlining the process. Better done with some smaller improper fractions, not in our large, you know, hundreds or thousands up on top. What you're going to do is you're going to have to think, okay, how many times does 8 go into 29? 
And then you should think to yourself, well, I know that 8 times 3 is 24. So you're going to put your 3, because that's what you're multiplying, off to the side. And then we need to subtract that 24, the 8 times 3, from 29. And that equals 5. So our 5 stays on top. And then our bottom always stays the same. And we have 3 and 5 eighths, just like the answer we got in the question before. And it was done using our math facts and our mental math. Okay, and a uh, final part of this lesson is changing a mixed number into an improper fraction. The first thing I want to remind you of is a whole, when we're speaking in fractions, is going to be a number over itself. Since the problem or the mixed number we're looking at is in fifths, we want to make sure we think of a one or a whole as five fifths. Because if you have five fifths of a pan, brownie pan, you would have the entire brownie pan. And that is important because that's the reason the method I'm about to teach you works. Um, to change this improper fraction, or I'm sorry, this mixed number into an improper fraction, we do what I call as the bottom times the big plus the top over the bottom. Um, and the reason we can do that is because these eight holes we want to think of as in fraction form, which means we're going to have eight of these five-fifths. So eight, five times eight is 40. We can make a little note right here. Okay, 40. And then we're going to do that plus our top. So 40 plus 3 is 43. And then we keep it over the same number. So again, that's simply the bottom times the big plus the top over the bottom again. And that is the improper fraction we would want. We use this for multiplying some fractions. We'll use it for dividing, um, sometimes even with adding them, subtracting them. Being able to change a mixed number to an improper fraction is very important. I hope this lesson helped you. If you need a reminder, feel free to rewind and pause whenever you need.